ESPN may have just leaked what the Washington Commanders are planning to do in the early rounds of the 2024 NFL Draft, and it's pretty juicy, so make sure you guys stick around on today's edition of the Commanders Report. And then also ESPN just came out with a brand new three-round mock draft for your Washington Commanders. So we'll be breaking down all six picks in that three-round mock later in today's show, so make sure you guys stick around. And here's the deal, guys. ESPN and ESPN Plus makes you pay $11 a month for this content. We here at the Commander Support think that's absolutely ridiculous, which is why we are giving it to you guys 100% free today. So if you want free Commander's premium content, no charge whatsoever, all you have to do is click that subscribe button right now and join the Commander's Report family today. Uh, and stick it to ESPN right now. So now let's get into ESPN's leaks, or quote-unquote leaks here, of the Commander's draft strategy in round one of the 2024 NFL Draft, specifically when it comes to which quarterback they're planning on taking at number two overall. This is what the Commander's reporter there at ESPN, John Keim, has to say about the decision. The Commanders have been tight-lipped, so it's hard to say if they have a true lean. But what is clear is that the most of the coaches I've spoken with, as well as ex-coaches who still study prospects, say it should be LSU's Jaden Daniels, and none have said North Carolina's Drake May should be picked over him. Perhaps one clue, Coach Dan Quinn said, uh, among other things, he wants someone who can, ha who can handle when coverages change post-snap, and he said Daniels processes things quickly, and that's in addition to his ability to make big plays with his legs. Yeah, it's why, and then also Matt Miller from ESPN, he's kind of like their more general NFL draft guy, is what he has to say. Yeah, it's widely accepted at this point that the commanders will draft a quarterback at number two. The question is, which one? When I asked a dozen NFL scouts and executives about the selection, I kept hearing that Daniels is the most likely pick. That intel, of course, is from people outside of the commander's organization, so take it with a grain of salt. But it sounds like many people around the league believe the reigning Heisman Trophy winner will follow Williams off the board. Now, coming up here, I'm going to discuss whether or not these guys from ESPN are right, and Jaden Daniels is about to become the next franchise quarterback of your Washington Commanders. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at PrizePix. Go to prizepix.com slash CLNS or download the PrizePix app today and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. PrizePix has specials for new and returning users alike uh, for the MLB season, which has just arrived, which is absolutely fantastic. When you head on over to prizepix.com slash CLNS or download the PrizePix app today, Football season may be over, folks, but the action on the diamond is just heating up, and you can make some money from the comfort of your couch watching your favorite MLB team play this season. So get on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your when you can turn your baseball knowledge into serious cash. That is if you know ball. So we really do appreciate our friends at Prize Picks, and all you guys gotta do is go to prizepickscom CLNS or download. The Prize Picks app today and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. Prize Picks is super easy uh, to play. All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and then watch the winnings roll in. They got a bunch of different things for you to choose from home runs, bases, even fantasy score for your favorite MLB baseball team and players. So you can get started now when you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Or download the Prize Picks app today and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more or pick less. It's that easy with our friends at Prize Picks. So, in my opinion, guys, Matt Miller, John Kime, both of them say that they're expecting, and not, not only that, but also ESPN's Adam Schefter says that he believes it's going to be Jaden Daniels. And I am also with them here that I think that's the right pick. Now, you might be asking yourselves, Jack, why isn't Drake May the pick? Well, I think that what it is, it boils down to this accuracy all right drake may has some very major footwork issues and that lack of footwork and lack of base that he plays with affects his accuracy to all levels of the field and that's something that's going to need to improve if he's going to be a successful nfl quarterback and reach that super high ceiling that he does in fact have and i'm not the only one saying this guys an nfl coach told the athletic may is herbert light take everything herbert does and make it less They'll be compared because of the prototype size, but there's no comparison. I like May, but when I see the amount of work it will take to have him reach his potential, 
will be fired first. So those are some pretty strong words from a coach that is currently in the National Football League today. And what he's talking about here and what it's going to take to kind of get him to the superstar level that he could potentially reach, it's accuracy. And you can really see it in these numbers right here presented by Ryan McChrystal. And these numbers come from Sports Info Solutions. From zero to nine yards, he ranked 92nd out of 123 quarterbacks in on-target percentage. That is abysmal. Most of those guys on that list aren't even going to sniff the National Football League, and he was 92nd out of that grouping. Then even worse, in the intermediate range, where most guys like Brock Purdy and Patrick Mahomes and other guys in this league make their money in that intermediate area of the field, 10 to 19 yards down the field, 101st out of 103 eligible quarterbacks in that area of the field. That is abysmal, folks. And then uh, the deep uh, accuracy, you know, it's a little bit better uh, uh, in terms of the ranking here, 40th out of 78, but that's definitely not the number that you want to see from somebody you're going to be spending a top two pick in the National Football League draft on and really uh, gamble your entire uh, coaching career or front office career on. Now, when it comes to Jaden Daniels, he doesn't really have those concerns. He has a lot more consistent uh, accuracy in that uh, derives from better throwing mechanics, uh, much cleaner upper body mechanics, and then also really good pocket footwork. He plays with good base. He plays with good balance in his footwork, uh, and he plays with really good pocket presence when he's in there delivering passes. So because of that, that gives Jaden Daniels a bit of a higher floor, in my opinion. But as we all know with Jaden Daniels from his Heisman Trophy winning campaign at LSU last year, he is a dynamic threat with his legs, and he still has a similar high upside that Drake May brings to the table, only he doesn't have the major accuracy concerns that come with drafting May at number two. So let me know down there in the comments section, who should be the pick here? Should it be Jaden Daniels? Type JD. If you want Drake May still, type DM. Or if you think JJ McCarthy out of Michigan, who has been linked to the commanders in the past, should be the pick. Type JJ down there in the comments section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. All right, so now let's get into the ESPN three-round Commander's Mock Draft that both Mel Kuyper Jr. and Field Yates put together six picks for the Washington Commanders here. So let's get right into it, and let's start with the easiest one here. It's the same that they've done for all their mock drafts, Jaden Daniels to the Commanders at number two. Don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this one specifically. I'm going to give it an A, though, because I think this is the right pick especially if Caleb Williams goes off the board at number one like everyone is expecting. I think Jaden Daniels is the best possible pick the commanders can make in that spot. Then at number 36, kind of an interesting pick here. Uh, they have the commanders going with a cornerback, Ennis Rakestraw Jr. out of Mizzou. Now, I'm a fan of Rakestraw and his game. I think that he plays very technically refined footwork, uh, football, and I don't hate this pick whatsoever. Now, does he have the super high upside to be a number one corner? in this league? I would argue probably not, but you're kind of hoping Emmanuel Forbes, who you took in round one last year, can kind of ascend to that role. So I really like Rakestraw's ability to play in both man and zone coverage. He has really good arm length, which he uses to break up passes, stick with guys, and it really helps with his recovery as well. He also does a good job not grabbing the jersey of the opposing wide receiver, so you're probably not going to see too many DPIs and holding calls with him. Plus, because of his great short area quickness and instincts in zone coverage, not to mention man coverage ability, he can be really good in the slot as well. So I really like his versatility playing inside or outside. The cons with him, though, only 183 pounds. Uh, could use uh, definitely use a couple more pounds on his frame, uh, especially if he wants to be a press man jam corner. And then the speed, it's just okay, 4.51. That's a bit on the lower side. I have a round two grade on him because I think he's going to be a really good number two cornerback in the league right away, but I don't think he necessarily has the upside to be like a lockdown, number one, put him on an island type guy in the National Football League. I'll give this a B minus. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you probably could have got a little bit of a better value at this pick, but if you're looking for a good corner that's going to start for you right away, I think Ennis Rakestraw is somebody that's going to get that job done. Now, my least favorite pick of this mock is at number 40, which is Kingsley Suamataya. He's one of my favorite names. He is the, he's on the all, uh, all the, on the all name list of this NFL draft class for sure out of BYU, but he definitely needs a lot of work, guys, and I think this would be a major miss 
by the Washington Commanders if, he, if they ended up taking him here at number 40. Uh, I think that with Jaden Daniels coming to town, you want to get an offensive tackle that's ready to go right away to protect him the best of his ability. And if you're plugging in Sua Matea right in there to start his career, I think he's going to give up a lot of pressures. I think he's going to give up a lot of big hits on your young rookie quarterback here. Uh, I think he needs at least a year of development on the bench to learn from a veteran before he's really ready to take the ranks as a left or right tackle in the National Football League. Now, I get it. He really tested well at the combine. He's got the big body and the long arms you look for, and he's got really good athleticism to pair with that. I'm not denying that he could be a good tackle in this league someday with the right development. I'm just saying he's not ready to go year one, and that's what I want if I am the Washington commander. So I'm going to give this one a grade of a C minus. I mean, maybe it works out for you in the future. You're hoping, uh, but I really want to protect Jaden Daniels in his rookie season, especially because he's still uh, pretty thin. And if he takes a big hit, that could lead to a major injury. Then in round three here, uh, we start round three with Roman Wilson, wide receiver out of Michigan. One of my favorite wide receivers in this entire draft class. I love Roman Wilson. I love uh, his ability to get open with his route running, his speed. He's a 4-3 uh, speed kind of guy, really good on deep crossers from the slot, and he's a dog in the run game. He can block his ass off, and I love that with kind of like these smaller wide receivers that play in the slot. Now, I do think he has the route running acumen and the strength and the physicality to survive as a Z wide receiver on the outside, uh, but at the end of the day, man, he's got super reliable hands, Really good route running, has a full route tree as, at his disposal. Really good at catching balls over the middle of the field. So supreme toughness from somebody that's going to be working in the middle of the field a lot in the NFL. I think he's a really good wide receiver. In many draft classes, he might be like a late round one kind of guy. I think in a loaded uh, wide receiver class this year, he's probably going to go in round two. Uh, but if you can get, it, get him in round three, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, the only downside that I can think of for the Washington Commanders to draft Roman Wilson there at the top of round three is that it's another smaller wide receiver. I mean, Terry McLaurin is the biggest receiver that this team has, and he's just six foot tall, all right? So you don't really have that menacing presence in there. And his profile is kind of similar to De'Ami Brown's who can play in the slot. He can play a little bit on the outside. He's more of a true deep threat. Now, I think Wilson's slightly better. Uh, but I think if you're going to be spending a pick on a wide receiver, it's going to be on somebody with a bit more size. So I'll give this one a B because I love the player. Uh, he's good on screens. You know, he's decent with the ball in his hands and space as well. I don't hate the pick, but I don't necessarily love the pick. So I'll go kind of in the middle here with a B. Then we get to Jonah Ellis, who is actually from Utah, not Nebraska. Uh, but edge rusher, and I love this pick, folks. I absolutely love Jonah Ellis from Utah. He's one of my guys in this year's draft class. And if you can get this guy in round three, I think that's going to be one of the steals of the draft. He had a shoulder issue last year. Uh, he played through it, but he really didn't play well when he played through that shoulder issue. But before he had that, uh, that injury to his shoulder, uh, he was putting out excellent tape, like first round level tape. So if that shoulder checks out and, you know, I don't have the medical information to know for sure. But if that medical checks out, I think Jonah Ellis is going to be an unbelievable edge rusher in this class. He has so many different ways to beat you. He's super intelligent reading the opposing offensive tackle. Uh, he plays with good uh, power as well. That I, I just really like the game of Jonah Ellis. He's super savvy, lots of tenacity. I think that he's going to be a really good player in this league. And if you can get him in round Three, that's going to be an incredible steal for the Washington Commanders. I'll give this one an A+, plus because I think that he's going to probably go in round two. So if he falls to round three and you can somehow get the job done here, this is absolutely something that I would do if I'm the Washington Commanders. And this is an easy A-plus grade as far as I am concerned. Now with the last pick here in this ESPN mock draft, they have them going another steal in round three with Jatavian Sanders, the tight end out of producer Coop's Texas Longhorns here at number 100. And, you know, guys, I think Sanders is probably going to go a lot higher than pick number 100, but this would be, once again, an incredible steal for the Washington Commanders if they can get him this deep on day two. Or literally the last pick on day two of the NFL draft would just be unbelievable. I have him ranked as my number two tight end. I have a true round two grade on him. Super dynamic as a receiving threat over the middle of the field. Super reliable hands as a threat in the red zone. 
I really like Jatavian Sanders. He's n not necessarily on the level of like a Brock Bowers or anything like that. He's not a first-round caliber guy, at least in my opinion. But Sanders learning from Zach Ertz, who's been one of the best receiving tight ends in this game for a very long time in his first season in this league, I think would give Jaden Daniels a super nice safety blanket over the middle of the field that he really desperately needs as he adjusts to the NFL game. So this is another one where I'm giving it an A+. Plus. They really knocked these last two picks out of the park, in my opinion. If Jonah Ellis and Jatavian Sanders both fall to you in round three, you can somehow land both. I think that's one hell of a draft haul, if you're asking me. Now you look at the draft haul overall here. What do you think of it? A, B, C, D, or F. You take Jaden Daniels, the quarterback out of LSU in round one. Take Ennis Rakestraw and Kingsley Suamatea there in round two. And then you get Roman Wilson. Jonah Ellis, and Jatavian Sanders. Three guys I have round two grades on in round three. That is an incredible round three here that ESPN is giving the Washington Commanders. So let me know what you think down there in the comments section. And my grade, guys, I'm going to give it a B plus. That round three is absolutely phenomenal, getting three guys that I think are round two caliber dudes. And you're getting those guys at an incredible value. Plus, Jaden Daniels, I think, is the right pick in the first pick. But Ennis Rakestraw at 36 might be a little bit of a reach. And then Sua Matea at number 40, in my opinion, is definitely a reach. So it's not a perfect mock draft, in my opinion. But that round three definitely increases the grade for me. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We've reached the end of today's show. So if you liked what you saw today, we got more Commanders content coming your way tomorrow and every single day leading up to the 2024 NFL Draft. So what are you waiting for? If you like today's video, you're going to like tomorrow's video. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now.